be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. O Christ our Lord, though you are God, you became man. Make us worthy to rejoice on this feast of your glorious birth, and with Mary your mother and Joseph your chosen one, to thank, praise, and adore you, crying out with the angels, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace and good hope to all. We glorify you, your Father, and your Holy Spirit forever. Amen. Peace be with the church and her children. raise glory, honor, and praise to the Father who in his love sent his only begotten Son to us, and to the Son who was born of the Virgin Mary in Bethlehem, and to the Holy Spirit who fills us with joy, peace, and holiness on this feast. To the good one be glory and honor on this feast in all the days of our lives and forever. Glory and thanks to you, eternal Son. You are without beginning or end. You are the hidden light who shines upon the world and the ancient of days, born as a child from the daughter of David. Today we celebrate the mystery of your love for us, proclaiming, you are wonderful, O God. You became man, yet you will remain God. You are wonderful, O God. You came down to us and were born in a manger. Yet you fill heaven and earth with your glory. You are wonderful, O God. The angels and shepherds and magi came to adore you. By your birth you tore down the wall, separating heavenly and earthly beings, reconciling heaven and earth. By your birth you brought together those who are far and those who are near to celebrate your feast. At your birth the angels announced to the shepherds, to you is born this day in the city of David, a Savior who is Messiah the Lord. Now, a wondrous child, we ask you with the fragrance of this incense to help us to understand the mystery of your incarnation. Forgive our sins, free us from all distress, and remember our departed who have gone to their rest hoping in you. We raise glory and thanks to you, to your Father, and to your Holy Spirit forever.
We adore you, O Son of the Father from all eternity, and Son of the Virgin born in time. When you became flesh, our eyes were able to see God, bringing us closer to the one who dwells in the heights. With the light of your knowledge, you enlightened our minds with the knowledge of the one who is beyond our understanding. Accept our incense, forgive our sins, and grant rest to our departed. We raise glory and thanks to you, to your Father, and to your Holy Spirit forever. Amen. <coughs> Kaddishat, aloho Kaddishat, chayelto no Kaddishat, lo mohuyuto. She ho de ti led men but the weed eat the hum. As foretold by Isaiah, wonderful his name shall be. Christ is born of a virgin, as a child God is revealed. Reading from the letter of he the letter to the Hebrews. Glory to the Lord of Paul and the apostles. May the mercy of God descend upon the reader, the listeners, and upon this parish and her children forever. Brothers and sisters, <coughs> excuse me. By faith, Moses was hidden by his parents for three months after his birth because they saw that he was a beautiful child and they were not afraid of the king's diet. By faith, Moses, when he had grown up, refused to be known as the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He chose to be ill-treated among all the people of God rather than enjoy the fleeting pleasure of sin. He considered the approach of the anointed greater wealth than the treasures of Egypt for he was looking to the recompense. By faith, he left Egypt, not fearing the king's fury, for he persevered as if seeing the one who was invisible. By faith, he kept the Passover and sprinkled the blood that the destroyer of the firstborn might not touch them. By faith, they crossed the Red Sea as if it were dry. 
But when the Egyptians attempted it, they were drowned. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell after being encircled for seven days. By faith, Rahab the harlot did not perish with the, dis with the disobedient, for she had received the spies in peace. Praise be to God always. The Word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen His glory, the glory of our Father's only Son. Praise glory to our most opportunity. I'm going to sing since two years. Before the proclamation of the gospel of our Savior announcing life for our souls, we offer this incense and ask for your mercy, O Lord. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. From the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Saint Matthew, who proclaimed life to the world. Let us listen to the proclamation of life and salvation for our souls. Remain silent, O listeners, for the Holy Gospel is about to be proclaimed to you. Listen and give glory and thanks to the Word of the Living God. The Apostle Matthew writes. When they had departed, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, and he said, Rise and take the child and his mother and flee to Egypt, and stay there until I tell you. Herod is going to search for the child in order to destroy him. And Joseph rose, and he took the child and his mother by night, and they departed for Egypt. He stayed there until the death of Herod, that what the Lord had said to the prophet might be fulfilled, out of Egypt I have called my son. When Herod realized that he had been deceived by the Magi, he was furious, and he ordered the massacre of all the boys in Bethlehem and its vicinity who were two years old and under, in accordance with the time that he had ascertained from the Magi. Then was fulfilled what had been said through the Jeremiah the prophet. A voice was heard in Ramah, sobbing and loud lamentation, Rachel weeping for her children, and she would not be consoled as they were no more. This is the truth, peace be with you. Praise and blessings to Jesus Christ, our Lord and God. Forgive me of his words of life. Praise and blessings to Jesus Christ, our Lord. And Joseph rose and took the child and his mother and by night fled to Egypt. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. There is in the days of Herod a great amount of joy. Not happiness, not jubilation, not ecstasy, not dancing, but joy, as we've mentioned before, joy is that emotional response of possessing the good. 
So that when good is present to us, there is this satisfaction, which is not the same thing as exuberance or jubilation. It is a profound sense. It's what our Lord, when he means that I, my peace I give to you at the Last Supper, not as the world gives. And so by beginning with this idea that Joseph rose in the middle of the night, and with the child and, and the child's mother, that they flee by night into Egypt, there is still profound joy because of the possession of the reality of who the Messiah is. The reason why I bring this up is because we mentioned on, on Christmas Day, those who move closest to God oftentimes have the most difficult lives on a human scale. Because as we mentioned, we reminded on Christmas Day when we think about the birth, the singing of the angels, the glory that they, the shepherds, Joseph and Mary don't see any of that. Nothing's given to them. They're not even given a room by God's providence. They're given nothing, silence. And yet we know by the possession of that divine light that enters into the world, there's profound joy at this feeding trough. Now, the gospel begins by saying when they had left. Well, the they is the magi. So the first part of this gospel, which was yesterday's reading, was about the visit of the magi. Everyone knows the story, you all have cribs. We don't have any kings here set up. There's no room, actually. I don't even know if we even have kings. They have to be here someplace. I don't know. I have an attic full of broken statues, so they may be up there. But the Magi are the teachers. They are the priests. They're the teachers of the Zoroastrian fire religion of Mesopotamia and of Persia. We're so used to have everything set up in the crib. We see the magi and the shepherds and the sheep and the ox and the ass, and they're all like jostling around this feeding trough. It's not quite that way on that night. And the magi probably come no sooner than a year after the child's born. And that's what he's telling us. Chapter 2 in St. Matthew is talking about the coming of these Persians, the magi. And then what we have now is immediately when they leave, that sets off a whole other series of events. Because God, through an angel, speaks to them in their dream and says, don't go back to Herod. This is not a good idea. He's going to kill the child. And they're sent back another route. They're preserved by God's providence. But when they had left, though the whole series begins with Herod now in fury, we're told about the time. There are two things. One is that Herod has all of the boys who are toddlers, two years and under, the new babies, these two-year-olds and younger, kill them all. And as a reminder, remember that John, John, John the Baptist is one of these children. He's only six months older than our Lord. He's one of these two-year-olds and under. And he's preserved, and if you visit the church of Ayin Karim, you see what the tradition is, is why John was not killed that, during that period when the soldiers went out. But when the angel appears to St. Joseph in the dream, we also notice a number of things. Our Lord's not governing. The child's not sitting there and saying, all right, we go to Egypt now. Nor does the angel appear to the mother of God, who is all pure and all holy. He appears to the father of the family. It's not about the question of worthiness. It's a question of the direction that God is giving. So we're told that Herod chooses two years and under because of the fact of the time span that he has ascertained from the Magi. So it may be a year, and he may just be adding a little extra just to be safe, so kill the two-year-olds and under. The second reason why we think that it follows quite a bit of time after, and certainly not immediately with the birth, is that when Mary and Joseph do the presentation, they bring the child to redeem him back at the temple and offer sacrifice for the child on the 40th day, what we commemorate on February 2nd. Joseph and Mary do the sacrifice of the poor, two doves. It's supposed to be a yearling lamb. But for the poor who can't afford that for a sacrifice, the law allows them two doves. Now, there is no way that we can possibly imagine that the Magi came and one of the things they gave was gold, and that a month later, Joseph and Mary are like, no, 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 just 
put that in the account and we'll, we're poor, so we'll do the dove thing. Then never that would happen. If they had had the means disposed to do the proper and the correct sacrifice, they certainly would have offered the yearling. And so the gifts that are brought are brought later on. And the third thing why, if you read the Gospel of St. Matthew, we're told that when the Magi arrive at this place, because whatever this thing is, the star, it moves. It's not a constellation. It's not, it's not an astronomical thing that just simply happened that year. It is something which has been able to lead these men, and we're told that it stops over the house. Herod knows, Herod doesn't believe, but Herod knows that the Jews teach that Bethlehem is where the Messiah is meant to be born. He doesn't believe the prophecies. He does religious stuff superficially, if you want. But he doesn't know where in Bethlehem or even in the vicinity, nor do the Magi. They just go to Bethlehem because that's what the prophets have taught. So they go to Bethlehem. But we're told that the star leads them and stops over the place where the child is. And that's why on the third point, when we read it, the Magi go to the house, we told. The house, and in the house, they find the child and his mother. Joseph's not there. So Joseph's working or something. Now we have no idea why they stay in Bethlehem. But certainly Joseph has extended family, remember? He is of the family of David. His ancestry is from Bethlehem. So certainly there are cousins who live in the area and there's no reason why they settle down for whatever reason, we don't know. But when the Magi come, they find them in the house. And of course they leave their famous gifts of myrrh, frankincense, and gold. But of course again in the middle of the night, Joseph is told you get up now and you flee to Egypt. He's not told anything else. Remember, we talked about the fact of the silence that surrounds Mary and Joseph. And part of that blindness and the kind of darkness that comes to us as we enter deeper and deeper into the spiritual life is not because it's dark, it's because it's luminous. And if we were to walk into the train light, you know, a train's locomotive headlight, the, clo the, the closer you get, the more you would be blinded by the light. It's clearly light, but my eyes are not able or someone flipping on the lights when we're still not awake, right? And so after you swearing at them and cussing and everything, then you have to kind of sh shake yourself out because of the light. There's nothing wrong with the lights of the ceiling of your bedroom. It's just that flicking them on immediately, this causes total disorientation. This is an image of what happens in the spiritual life. Notice they have, they have silenced the year before at the, bapt at the birth of our Lord. A year later, they're being told, you leave, you leave now, and you leave in the middle of the night, and you go to Egypt until, they don't tell you where to go in Egypt, just go to Egypt, and then you just stay there until I tell you to come back. They're not even given a date. Go there for six months, go there for a year, go for two years, and you'll be able to come back. No, you just go and I will tell you. Now, we're told in the gospel, of course, today, that they come back once Herod is dead. But the angel sending them out just sends them out into the night. But God always gives a little bit by his providence. They go to Egypt. They don't go to the east. They don't go north. They don't go back to Nazareth. They go to Egypt, which had, which sounds peculiar at first, but there are a number of Jewish colonies, Jewish yeah, we call them colonies, Jewish habitations, groups of populations of Jews in the Delta and then further south in Egypt. And so they go among certainly the Jewish diaspora. And again, they settle down there waiting for whatever is supposed to happen. The very, very small little points that God gives us by his providence in this case was the gold given by the Magi. This gave them the ability to travel and to go to Egypt and to settle in that place until again they're told to return. So God's providence, even if he's going to be flicking on the light in your lives and blinding us and causing this kind of shock of the way he leads us deeper into the gospel or by inundating our lives by the light of grace at times seeming to be blind and totally disoriented, God will always give your gold there. There will always be something 
that we can hang on to. The problem is, is that from our point of view, it's not the way it's supposed to go, the way things are supposed to happen in my life. And so that illusion has to also be shattered. That divine light will lead us as the path according to divine wisdom, not according to our expectations or illusions. We don't see anything about Mary complaining, why are you waking me up in the middle of the night? This is stupid. Why can't we leave in the morning? I mean, the baby hasn't been fed. What are we going to do? I can't pack. None of that's there. They immediately take everything because of that docility to providence. They're not questioning and saying, this is stupid. Why can't we go back to Nazareth? Why do we have to go so far? Why do we have to travel through the desert? Why do we have to? Why do we have to? Why do we have to? Why me? The long modern wine of modern day populations. Why me? And they never say this because they have peace. And they have the joy of the presence of divine wisdom. And they know they have this presence which brings that joy. And they know that even if they don't understand, these events come from the hand of infinite love and infinite wisdom which is the divinity. Doesn't mean we understand, but it means that as we contemplate these mysteries of Christmas, we're being taught that the follow of the gospel is not easy. Look at the quotation you have at the end from the prophet Jeremiah, Rachel weeping and mourning. Now he's applying it to all these mothers who have lost their sons, who are killed. And again, we have no idea how many children, a few dozen, a couple hundred, we don't know. But we do know one child being murdered is sufficient to cause wailing and weeping. And so the reason that's quoted by Jeremiah the prophet talking about the place of Judea, because from Ramah was the place where the Babylonians began the deportation. The deportation center was in Ramah in the vicinity of Bethlehem. So Jeremiah uses a story from centuries before, because Rachel is the wife of Jacob, Israel. And he uses it because Rachel dies in Ramah, in childbirth. She gives birth to her, her second son. She gives birth to her son, Benjamin, the last of the 12 patriarchs. But she dies in childbirth, and before she dies, she names him actually Ben-Oni, son of my suffering, and she dies. And Jacob doesn't want this name. So Jacob later on changes his name to Ben-Yamin, Yamin, son of my right hand. And Benjamin, the last of the sons, born of the most loved of all of his wives, becomes the precious one in his eyes. That's why when you've heard that phrase, when somebody has a family and the youngest one, oh, that's your Benjamin. That's your beloved last one at the end, who's going to be spoiled rotten, I suppose. But that's who Rachel is. And so Rachel it dies in Rama, and that idea that the child doesn't die, but it's the mourning and weeping, the loss of Rachel. And Rachel becomes an image throughout the Old Testament of the mother of Israel who intercedes for the people of Israel. So the notion of the intercession of the saints in that is already in a minuscule way, but already present in the old law. And so Rachel is brought up again by Jeremiah and then used again by Matthew to remind the Christians who are hearing this gospel that our life is one that may bring life, but it also comes through death and labor. So to leave you with one last point, which is a charming little detail when you go to Bethlehem, is there is a little chapel, little church, that when you enter in, it's built on the side of one of the hills in the Bethlehem area, and so that part of the church is like a cave. And when you walk in, everywhere you look, there are paintings, statues, all of these ex voto offerings throughout the centuries that have been given to this church of the mother of God nursing the Christ child freaks out all the American puritanical sensibilities because you have a nursing mother everywhere over the altar everywhere 
Because the tradition, it's known as the grotto of the milk. And the tradition is, is that as Mary and the baby are being woken up by Joseph because they leave in the middle of the night as soon as the angel announces this, that we have to go. By tradition, there is the moment of saying, all right, but at least let me a moment to nurse the baby before we head off into the desert. Which, of course, is what she does. So at the side of the road, she just goes in the little cave area, she nurses the Christ child, and they continue on their exile to Egypt. It's a very beautiful little detail and a lovely thing. And all the women frequent it when they're expecting babies. Christians and Muslims, they all go to this one chapel in Bethlehem. So it's a small detail. But we thank God that he gives us these details, that our desire to walk into the light, to penetrate by charity and through faith and fidelity to the divine light that is divine wisdom incarnate, we understand that walking to the light will at this time sometimes cause us a disorientation and blindness, and our lives will be turned on their head occasionally. But that's okay, because the path has already been shown by Mary and Joseph of how God leads those who are closest to him. Doesn't make it easy, but he always fills us with peace and with joy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. We believe in one God, the Father and the Son, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only God, the Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten of God.
have the sheets for the transfer hymn for the season of the nativity in your pews to sing with the choir. Almighty Lord in God, you have accepted the offerings of our ancestors. Now accept these offerings that your children have brought to you, out of their love for you and for your holy name. Shower your spiritual blessings upon them, and in place of their earthly gifts, grant them life and your imperishable kingdom. As we remember our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ and his plan of salvation for us, we recall upon this offering all those who have pleased God from Adam to this day, especially Mary, the Blessed Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, Saint Mary, Saint Jude, and Saint Charbon. Remember, O God, the children of the Holy Church, our fathers and mothers, and our brothers and sisters, both the living and the departed, especially those for whom this sacrifice is offered for the intentions of all the members of this parish. Remember also all those who share with us today in this offering. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Lord God and Father, holy and glorious is your name. You deliver those who love you from all that is contrary to your will. May we who have remained in your divine love be made worthy to give one another the greeting of peace with the holy kiss. May we always speak words of peace, think of peace, and work for peace. Through the grace of your only Son and his love for all people, we raise glory to you and to your living Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Peace to you, O holy altar of God. Peace.
to the holy mysteries placed upon you. Peace to you, O minister of God. Peace to you, O server of the Holy Spirit. May each one of us give a greeting of peace to his neighbor with love and faith, which is pleasing to the Lord. from all creation, you are peace, reconciling those who are enemies. You are forgiveness to those who sin, you are comfort to those who are sorrowful. Open the door of your mercy to our petitions, that in the abundance of your grace accept our prayers. Make us children and heirs of your kingdom through the grace of your only Son and his love for all people, and through your Holy Spirit now and forever. O oh Lord, you are adored by all. Angels bless you, humanity exalts you, and all creation glorifies you. Look upon your children who call out to you with purity and holiness. May we offer you an acceptable sacrifice that we may raise glory to you and to your only Son and to your Holy Spirit now and forever. love of God the Father and the grace of the only begotten Son and the communion and indwelling of the Holy Spirit be with you my brothers and sisters forever and with your spirit let us lift up our thoughts our minds and our hearts we lift them up to the Lord let us give thanks to the Lord with reverence and worship him with humility Truly it is right and just to thank, adore, glorify, bless the majesty of the one consubstantial Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, our majesty that does not need our glory or become greater with our thanks. O Lord, those who sing your praises are countless, and they cry out with angelic voices, and with sweet melodies proclaiming. Father, for you have exalted our weak human nature. In your mercy you sent your only Son into the world for our salvation. He dawned from the Holy Virgin like a ray of light from a bright cloud. He took the form of a slave, yet truly he is the Son of your majesty. He willingly became man to make us divine. He was born from a woman's womb, that we may be born again from a spiritual womb. He became our brother, so that through his grace we may become your children and heirs. He took us from being slaves and made us your children. He promised us a share in the reward that allows us to call you Abba, Father. He cleansed us from our sins with his precious blood that he poured out for us. For he is your only Son. 
Ubiamo hadachtam hasho dilema bedhayen. En sabe lachmo mina kodi shanto u barachu kadesh. Waksoya bel talmita karamare. Sabachul mehne kulchu. Khono denita. Fahuru dil, dahlo faikun wahlab sagiye, me takse o me tiham. Khusoyan haune wa haiyan alam alamin. خنا الكوس دم سخ و من حمر و من مايون بارخ و قادش و يا بالتالمي داو كارو مارا سابش داو مهنه كل خوه خونو دني تاو دمو ديلن ديان تيكي خداتو Nahlu faiku wahlub sagiye mete shadu meti hab khusoyun haume wa hayin al alam alamin. Do this in memory of me. Each time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you remember my death until I come again. We remember your death, O Lord. We profess your resurrection. We await your second coming. We implore your mercy and compassion. We ask for the forgiveness of sins. May your mercy rest upon us. O Word of God, who can comprehend that you willingly emptied yourself of your divine glory, who can explain your miraculous birth from a virgin, who can repay you for your saving passion which you freely endured, who can praise your plan of salvation for us. We can only ask of you, O lover of all people, that the sacrifice which we have offered be accepted on your holy altar in heaven the dwelling place of your hidden divinity in the company of all the angels and saints. Through this sacrifice, may we be worthy of the forgiveness of our sins. When you come to judge the living and the dead, do not pass judgment upon us, nor deny us, saying, I do not know you. On that glorious and fearful day, do not separate us from you nor cast us out of your paradise to a place of weeping and gnashing of teeth. Rather, because of your holy name by which we have been called, look with mercy upon us. In your compassion you have made us worthy of the gift of your forgiving body and blood. So make us, be worthy, make us worthy to be one with you in holiness as you are one with your Father. For this your church implores you, and through you and with you implores your Father, saying, Have mercy on us, Almighty Father, have mercy on us. O Lord, as we, your sinful children, receive your graces, we thank you for them and because of them. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We profess our faith in you and we ask you, have compassion on us, O God, have mercy on us and hear us. How awesome is this moment, O oh my beloved, for the living Holy Spirit descends and rests upon this offering for our sanctification. Let us stand with reverence as we pray. Anin monio, anin monio, anin monio, nite modro ho chayu kadisho, ona chen alai nu alu korbo no ho no. Ba 
cup, let this bread, the body of Christ our God, be for us a pledge of life to come. A body that grants us the everlasting joys of heaven, a body that renews our souls and bodies, a body that purifies us of all sin for eternal life. Amen. And that the mixture in this chalice, the blood of Christ our God, be a blood that gives new life to those who receive it, a blood that guides us to the safe harbors and the dwellings of light. A blood that renews our souls and bodies, a blood that purifies us of all sin for eternal life. O oh Lord, in your great mercy, when this body and blood is mingled with our bodies and souls, grant that it may be for the pardon of faults, the forgiveness of sins, and for the everlasting joy and eternal life with all your saints. We offer you, Lord God, this pure and holy offering for your holy, Catholic, and apostolic Church, which you have redeemed. Gather her children into unity, love, and faith, and guide them in peace and security. We offer it for the pure bishops of the true faith, Francis, the Pope of Rome, the Shada Peter, our Patriarch of Antioch, Gregory John, our Bishop, the Venerable Priests, the Chaste Deacons, the pure subdeacons, and all the orders of the church. Teach them the word of truth, so that they may spread it faithfully. With justice and holiness, may they care for the flock that you have entrusted to them. Give them the proper means to accomplish your will, and grant them a long life. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy for the poor and dejected, for orphans and widows, for the sick and distressed, for those tempted by evil spirits. Be the guardian and refuge of their lives. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember, O Lord, your holy church that you established on the solid rock of the true faith and send her vocations to the holy priesthood and religious life. In a world of distractions which pull us away from properly loving you and our neighbor, may those who you have called to serve your holy church respond to you and have the courage to follow your will. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remember the Holy Fathers, prophets, apostles, preachers, evangelists, martyrs, and confessors, especially the holy, gloried, and blessed ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint John the Baptist, the messenger and forerunner, who witnessed the betrothal of your holy church to your son, glorious Saint Stephen, the archdeacon and first martyr, and all who pleased you and professed your name, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all the faithful departed who have gone to you from this altar and from every place throughout the world, grant them rest in your heavenly dwellings with all your saints, and in your mercy forgive our sins and theirs. Lord, do not deprive us of your mercy, but keep us in the palm of your hand, lest we fall and go astray, so that we may walk on your paths and follow your ways. And do your will, forgive us and our departed, and pardon all sins and transgressions hidden and seen, committed with or without full knowledge. Make us worthy of a faithful Christian death that is pleasing to you, and join us to your righteous ones and to those who have done your will that in us and in all things your blessed name may be glorified with the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and of your living Holy Spirit, now and forever. As it was, is now, shall be forever.
pleasing oblation, who offered yourself for us. You are the forgiving sacrifice, who offered yourself to your Father. You are the high priest, who offered yourself as a lamb. Through your mercy, may our prayer rise like incense, which we offer to your Father through you. To you be glory forever. O Lord, our Lord, you sent us your only Son, who is the radiance of your eternity, and he accomplished his plan of salvation for us, that we may come to you. May we call upon you with the prayer that he taught his holy disciples, saying, Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of our Lord, now and forever. Yes, O merciful Lord, we ask for your compassion. By your grace, make us worthy that your glorious name may be made holy in us, that your kingdom come to assist us in our weakness, and that your will dwell within us. Deliver us from all difficult temptations. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, with your only Son and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit, bow your heads before the God of mercy, before his forgiving altar, and before the body and blood of our Savior, who gives life to those who partake of him, and receive the blessing from the Lord. O Lord God, you are good and the lover of all people. Look upon those who bow their heads before your majesty, and bless them with every spiritual blessing. Do not turn us away when we approach your divine and holy gifts, and let us not be guilty of unworthily receiving the body and blood of your only Son. Rather, make us worthy to share in your holy and life-giving mysteries with purity, that we may raise glory and thanks to you, to your only Son, and to your good and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The grace of the Most Holy Trinity, eternal and consubstantial, be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. And with your Spirit. Let each one of us look to God with reverence and humility and ask him for mercy and compassion. Holy gifts for the holy with perfection, purity, and sanctity. One Holy Father, one Holy Son, one Holy Spirit, blessed be the name of the Lord, for he is one in heaven and on earth. To him be glory forever. Make, Make us worthy, O Lord God, so that our bodies may be sanctified by your holy body, and our souls purified by your forgiving blood. May our communion be for the forgiveness of our sins and for a new life. O Lord our God, to you be glory forever.
Again and again we thank you, O Lord, and raise glory to you for giving us your body to eat and your living blood to drink. O lover of all people, have mercy on us. Lord Jesus, you have made us worthy to share in your holy body and in the cup of salvation. How can we repay you for these your gifts and graces and for your goodness? As you have called us to approach this life-giving banquet, make us worthy so that your body may be mingled with our bodies and your blood with our souls for the pardon of faults, the forgiveness of sins and for eternal life. You are blessed and your kingdom is holy, and we raise glory to you, to your Father and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. O God the Father, we bow before you and we entrust ourselves to your care. We ask you, imploring your mercy, to rest your right hand full of blessings upon us. Assist us, protect us. Bless us and sanctify us by the holy cross of your only Son. We glorify and honor you, your only Son, and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. So, of course, we have lots of holy days at Christmas time, and out of our ten holy days that we have extra to our Sundays that we have to be at Mass and observe as Sundays, three of them come at Christmas time. 
Well, number two is coming up on January 1st for the Feast of the Circumcision, so this coming Wednesday. Next week is the Epiphany. So on Wednesday we will have Mass as usual at 10 o'clock as for a Holy Day, and 4 p.m. on Tuesday evening for those who have to work. So 4 p.m. Tuesday evening, 10 o'clock on Wednesday. And also thank you very much for all the gifts I forgot yesterday. You're very kind and very generous. You always outdo yourself. I forgot yesterday at Saturday to say thank you to everyone because I actually haven't had time to sit down and open the cards yet. But there's quite a stack there, and certainly your generosity is very touching. Thank you. So go in peace, my beloved brothers and sisters, with the nourishment and blessings you have received from the forgiving altar of the Lord. May the blessing of the Most Holy Trinity accompany you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the one God, to whom be glory forever. <laughs>